really excited that we're turning some companies cash flow positive overnight, which is something that is incredible for the founders because they, they suddenly see that, hey, maybe I don't have to do myself anymore in the future. Miguel, I'm excited to be able to chat with you today. To begin, share very briefly five seconds of what is CapChase. Yeah, CapChase is a fintech for SaaS companies. And basically what we help them is to grow in an undiluted way. I like uh, on your site, so dilution is not the solution. Good, good play on words. So tell me, how did you discover this problem and you're like, we got to solve this? Yeah, so basically I was working on a SaaS company before with two of my co-founders and um, we took the company from zero revenue to three million in ARR in around three years. So we experimented a lot with different payment terms and with um, cash flow or cash flow management strategies. So to give you an idea, at the beginning when we started, we would just like sign up customers in whichever way we could. We just wanted to show traction and iterate with customers. So we were charging them monthly to try to reduce the friction to get them to sign up. And it was great because for them, it was little friction to pay on a monthly basis for a software product. And then what we saw is that our bookings were increasing, right? Short sales cycles, nice ACVs, people were paying nicely, they were happy. Bookings were increasing, revenues were increasing too. Our costs were increasing too, you know, all those customer acquisition costs, implementation costs, sales commission costs, and so on. But cash was not. Cash was lagging, right? Because we we're incurring all this upfront costs with customers, and then they were paying monthly. So we would see that famous cash gap that is typical in SaaS companies until they see the hockey stick growth. So then we had to race around to close that cash gap and we got diluted and that really hurt the CEO and founder. So he decided that we were going to charge up front. So we started charging up front, but then customers didn't want to because then it was not as easy for them to pay for it. So then we saw that deals started to get delayed and we had to incentivize our customers to pay up front by giving larger discounts. 20 to 30% discounts. So then we were not diluting ourselves, but we were cutting our top line by 20 to 30%. And in every single renewal, years down the line, people would be like, oh no, I'm not gonna pay 20% more because the original price was discounted. So it was really bad and would destroy lifetime value of the customers. So we didn't know how to solve that. And then months later, after we had transitioned out of the company, we're thinking about how to solve that problem and basically we came to the conclusion that it would be ideal to enable customers to pay monthly. So they sign up very quickly. They sign up and, and, and it's easy for them, little friction, and then give the SaaS codes all the cash up front so they can offset automatically those acquisition costs and keep investing in growth and cut the burn rate. And that's what we did. So now every time a company, a SaaS code, closes a customer that pays monthly or quarterly, what we do is we upfront them the full 12 months of contract value and the end customer keeps paying monthly and quarterly on a very flexible way to the SaaS company. So it's the best of the world. And you hook into effectively their, their system so that you can see the cash coming in and you just automatically withdraw it. Uh, exactly. Yeah. exactly. We, we never get in touch with the end customer because we want that relationship to remain between the SaaS code and the customers, but we can see how the flow of funds are moving. And then the moment that the end customer pays, we identify that payment and we withdraw uh, from the SASCO's bank account. So obviously there's other ways to be able to solve this problem, but you're trying to solve it in a new way and hopefully that costs less and, and no dilution. You mentioned 20, 30%, um, at which you typically been giving up to get people to pay in, in full. So what's then your average, what, are the, what is someone paying then to be able to use some, a service like yours? Yeah, okay, so, so the, we've spoken with hundreds of SaaS companies and the average discount to get paid up front is around 17%, so the equivalent of two free months. We've seen companies not doing any discounts, right? To companies doing 50% discount, depending on what, on what their goals are. So with captures, the discount is less than what they give to the customer, considerably less, it can be up to like 50% less. And then it is, it is much, much, much more um, competitive than things like venture debt or revenue-based financing, you know, or factoring, which no, nobody likes factoring, right? Um, so it's just like a much, much, much better system for SaaS codes because it was tailored for SaaS companies, you know, like venture that is just giving loans to uh, VC-backed companies. Uh, Revenue-based financing is a model that was that's really good for e-commerce companies, 
but it's not that good for SASCOs. And it's just like SASCOs are, are using it sometimes to avoid dilution. But Catfish was done by SAS operators for SAS, co com SAS companies, right? So it's perfectly tailored for that. What are you most excited about looking forward from here um, that you're working on and be able to launch and going forward? So we're really excited about the change that this needs for companies. So we're working with tens of companies already and the, the feedback we get is great. Like they, they absolutely love it because of what I mentioned, right? If you can imagine that you close $10,000 of MRR in a month, if you just, if you, if you charge monthly, the next month, your burn rate is going to go down by 10 K. But if you use captives, you're going to get, let's say 120 K up front. So your burn rate is going to decrease by 120 K. That means that you can either invest a lot in growth. So the next month you get more customers and this becomes like a self feeding machine that becomes what well, accelerates growth enormously and we are really excited that we're turning some companies cash flow positive overnight, which is something that is incredible for the founders because they, they suddenly see that, hey, maybe I don't have to elude myself anymore in the future. And then uh, we're just getting more and more integrated with their operations to make it easier for them to just focus on product and growth and forget about accounts receivable around cash management because we put all of that in autopilot with captures. So where do you see the company in like five years from now, long-term, how's it going to grow? Yeah. So I think it's what we, what we know we don't want to do is to be a lending company. In fact, we never use the word lending because we don't count as debt in the balance sheet, uh, which is also another founder friendly advantage. What we want to do is do a platform where every SaaS company can just upload all their back office, all their accounts receivable, all their accounts payable, and all that gets in autopilot. So founders can focus only on what really creates value for them, which is creating a product and getting that product in the hands of customers. And then one thing is that we, we think that VC is a great industry and it adds a lot of value because what they bring is not just money. Like a good VC, the last thing that you get from them is money. If you're only getting money from a VC, then that is the most expensive cost of capital a founder is ever going to get because like it is a hundred percent cost of capital. So we're not saying that founders shouldn't get VC because ourselves, we are, we are partnering with some VCs because the advice we get is incredible. What we're saying is use your very expensive VC money for very high return on investment activities, like hiring a 10 X engineer or doing a new product that is going to put you above the competition or entering a new market or buying a competitor, you know, but don't use 100% cost of capital money, essentially VC money, to do things that you can pour infinite money into, like customer acquisition, or things that have no return on investment, like working capital. If you're pouring you know, VC money to fund that cash gap to allow your customers to pay monthly, it is a poor use of funds. Use something like captures or an alternative. That means that you're using low cost of capital for low return and infinite pools of capital at a low cost to deploy on infinite activities like customer acquisition. It's like another tool in a tool belt of a SaaS uh, founder to be able to manage cash flow and options, not just saying, okay, there's only one way or two ways to get uh, yeah. funding. Now there, now there's another. What, just a simple problem though, if happens if client decides after two months to discontinue, what, how does that change then the arrangement? Yeah, so for example, uh, do you mean an end, so do you mean an end sure. customer of a SaaS course? or our SASCO customers? Uh, the end customer. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah, so, so um, that happens and it has happened already with a few companies. It, it doesn't matter really. We don't expect the companies, the SASCOs to pay us back because a customer that we advanced against has churned. What we do is we have an intelligence system that looks for similar customers in our SASCOs customer space and we replace them. So if a customer has churned, and they're not going to pay anymore than another customer that we weren't uh, upfronting um, that's paying the same or a little bit more will substitute and fill the gap just to, to, to fill that gap. So all this automatic, super visible to the company, to the SAS code, they can see what's happening and they can see always like how much, how many more customers they can advance and, and it takes literally one second to do that. Um, what's, is that a, a management that they do like a, on a monthly basis that they're like deciding how much they're going to, okay, this many customers all advance or whatever. Yeah. It's proposed by the, by the system and it's an opt-in or opt-out basically, but they, they get like, Oh, um, 
out of all the customers that, were, that had been affronted, these ones have turned and have left. And you have all of these new customers that you have um, closed this month. How many do you want to advance now? Got it. Where can people go to learn more? And, and then what's a good first step? How do they get started? What does that process look like? So we have a blog that we're trying to, to help um, founders with, you know, like the, the problems, the hard questions that we all ask ourselves. And we always, we, we almost oh, never have the answer, at least <laughs> ourselves, right? So we're, we're trying to help that. Um, and it's very, I mean, it's very fun and friendly in the sense that there are a lot of um, graphs explaining how things work in, in an easy way. And that is a good point. We are we're also featured on TechCrunch and Wall Street Journal. But if they want to learn from it, I'm, I'm available to everyone at my email. It's miguel at capture.com. And then um, in our website, they can just ask for more information and we will give them the full download and help them to evaluate if, if Capture makes sense, because in some cases it doesn't, or if there's anything else out there that can be, that can be more useful for them. Have you seen a company using AI, machine learning, or other technology to transform the way we live, work, and do business? Go to uptechreport.com and let us know.